fucking slit two times today. Uh-oh. Sounded like a one. There we go. We finally got it going. Going live. No testing of the mics done for this episode. All the presets are done, man. Nice, nice, nice. You know, are we finally like you Seems know like getting efficient in doing this thing? Yeah, uh, maybe streamline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is three o'clock, and it is episode sixty-two of the Flat Out Fever podcast. Hey guys, mm-hmm. hey hello, hey hello, mm-hmm. yo! What a magnificent race we that was just great. woke up to. From. Right, right. Oh my god! So briefly, I was telling yeah. my girlfriend about. Formula One and how we sort of started last year yeah. and how much different this year is already. It is incredibly yeah. way more exciting. Like, mm-hmm. I remember watching races last year with you guys and I was like, this is Formula One. <laughs> well, I literally <laughs> asked myself, you, you I was like, you guys this, fucking spend like, what weekends are you guys watching this? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys watch? Why do you watch this? And then not, like this year is like the year I was like, oh, this is why we watch this sport. Yeah. And uh, I was, I've been nothing but like just super excited about formula one I think it makes year. a big difference everything's sort of leveling out a little bit the playing yeah. field yeah exactly because like, when when, the, when guys... the mercedes were sort of ahead every race mm-hmm. uh, i was like well what 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 do <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't know for me i was always just kind of like i'm a lewis fan anyway but yeah. I just kind of pretend those guys pretty much weren't there yeah and you just focus on the rest of the race <laughs> yeah like third is first and third, then, yeah, third is first, and exactly. then it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, they they had a total domination last year. And now this year, it's it's, it's a bit it's, different. It's amazing. It's right. Like, I mean, they're still in the lead, right? We we, we kind of called well. I mean, it's not that like we called it. I'm sure we would have said this anyway. But yeah. the pieces were in place, right? And, and when we did talk about this, how we were really looking forward to this year and what this year could bring with everything that was that was happening right and already so much has even happened within the year max verstappen yeah from hero to zero in this <laughs> in this one race and then uh, I, sorry go ahead. Uh, and then like i get the, the 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 ferraris as well i mean like what's sort of happening with them like not as I, I feel like last year they were doing better yeah uh much better i feel and then, that too and now they're just it feels like they're fading away and, and red bull's almost starting to take their place right i, I think it, at least in the podium standings yes I think red bull's starting to take their own place back oh yeah. is that is that what it is <laughs> yeah because right they had they had be- before, before you right? started watching yeah they had four championships in a row in a row wow. yeah. holy moly yeah they That's went for exciting. four years straight and then where was ferrari at that point right behind them oh pretty really? much but Yes, they were for uh, Ferrari. Ferrari right th- those were the years where Fernando Alonso was chasing Vettel yeah. for the. Uh, but really? yes, it was it was Ferrari. Uh, Fernando Alonso's Ferrari. Yes. Ah, uh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. Before we we forget though, um, this is the just, Flat of Fever podcast. No, I already <laughs> said that, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for to everybody that again showed up to uh f1 at betty's it's uh it's, it, we've been wow. doing these screenings every year oh not every year for every race <laughs> this year um every year had, hopefully <laughs> yeah and we've, we've had a fantastic uh turnout it's been great uh this past um it, well the, for, for the monaco grand prix mm-hmm. this weekend this this past sunday uh so many people came out thank you everybody and, uh, and it wasn't live either and it wasn't live. that was that was the, that, that was, that was our hi- highest turn up probably when it, for a non-live event yeah a lot yeah. of new faces too yeah it's great yeah th- a lot thank of old you. faces as well Th- thanks for showing up guys mm-hmm. um anyway, only yeah, one sure. person fell asleep <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at freaking you travis, travis. <laughs> freaking travis uh but yeah anyway we, we we will um even though we won't be there for the canadian grand prix just freaking coming up, yeah. Um, because because we're gonna be at at, at, at the race Montreal. Mm-hmm. The F1 of Betty's will still show. Uh, like they, they will still be showing uh, the race of Betty's. So Torontonians, uh, if you haven't if you haven't turned out uh, to one of these events yet, uh, please uh, please do come. it. Wait, do we have someone like in in place? Yeah, we do. Oh, we, really? We do. We do. We do. We do. I talk to, to 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 the management of the bar. They're gonna take care of it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Throw on TSN, I suppose. Ah, uh, right. Okay, yeah, 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 ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, not, we're not gonna do Sky. Yeah, no, no, not live. Mm. Not, we don't have that capability yet, but we will. We're working <laughs> on it. Let's go back. I mean, in, Jesus, what a what a what a great race 
weekend all together. And yes, and we, Monaco's, Monaco's We weren't even in Monaco. Hmm? And we weren't even in Monaco. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um but the race was was amazing but qualifying was great through some surprises too. The the practice even was exciting to watch and um the, yeah, the, 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 way, pr- the only thing I missed this weekend was the FP3. So yeah. I, everything was awesome. Yeah, everything else. Was I set my alarm. I woke up for qualifying. Then I went right back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I did the same. But it was it was it was weird because not always do we get an exciting Monaco Grand Prix. The Monaco Grand Prix is always good to to watch as an as an it's event. Awesome to watch it. Quali- yeah. Qualifying is usually always pretty exciting. True. Yes, I'll give you that. But the it race gives itself everyone, is everyone a chance to it, show. It doesn't always pan out that the race, yeah. especially if it's on on a nice dry conditions, it, it becomes a bit more of a procession, and it's and it can be quite predictable. Yeah. Um, because the pole man always wins or whatever else. But thank goodness for the for the for the rain at the beginning of the race or for the wet conditions. That was really amazing. Changed everything. Yeah. Quite rare uh, safety car start. Yeah. And usually races that start with a race with, with a safety car are never never that exciting. If yeah. you if you if you if you go back and remember that yes it, they're never that great but this one so was the track, fantastic. The track changed like every lap though through the, through the race kept everyone changing tires. That was awesome. A few different to, strategies yeah. to to see how um like because you really can see the the racing line when more like see, when, you when see there it is up here like magic yeah, magic ink yeah when when there is like a clear racing line to take in in a specific sector you could yeah. see it but yeah. Yeah. there's also other areas. Where you where you just saw like more of a broader perspective, yeah, you could yeah, see wide, that widen and narrow. Is it? Yeah, you could see like how the drivers like would give themselves freedoms in certain yeah. corners, in certain corners uh, you wouldn't. It was fantastic. Now, do you, um, now that you bring that up, I kind of have a question. Like in in yeah. terms of like a wet circuit like this, yes. like that sort of happens. Will drivers sort of um, so obviously you have like this dry race line, right? Now, will they ever sort of start going on the edges of those to sort of make a, a another drier, a thicker, drier uh, line? No. No, they will no, always yeah. stick. O- only, not only, on purpose. yeah, not on purpose. Only, okay. only if you're like trying to like really. Right, because then you lose grip and. <sighs> here's 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 a circumstance where I can actually think of that happening. Um, if there was, let's say, a battle somewhere, like let's say for like second or third place in the podium, mm-hmm. right? And you were in a position where the leader of the race is like 20 seconds ahead of you. Mm-hmm. And the next person, like whatever fourth position is, is 20 seconds behind. Mm-hmm. And it's just a clear cut race of just the two drivers and with evenly matched cars. Yeah. Where if, if you just have the, uh, the normal racing line that's being cleared up by the other cars, you might not be able to like get close enough. Then maybe if you're a thinking driver yeah. and you and you figured I'm gonna be I'm gonna be behind this guy, not being able to do this, the race is maybe halfway half race distance, like you know Monaco that can be there. So yeah. we're only like in lap thirty. 20 seconds, we were separated 20 seconds either way to the, to the next driver. So you can take some liberties. So instead, you would you would maybe. If if you know that you're gonna be behind the guy for the next like ten to twenty laps, who knows? Yeah. Um, then maybe you start taking like a little bit of freedom in that and start clearing a path like uh, okay. and like for like four or five laps, just like take like maybe a little bit more and then <laughs> place it so that under braking for the next the next one you're gonna <laughs> then try. That's the only that's the only way that I can yeah, see that. that. That's what that I was seems sort of a bit far fetched. But yeah, it would be. Yeah, it was, I, I don't think I don't think that's ever be like uh, nobody nobody calculates that far out. Yeah, I uh, mean, uh, yeah. Nico, we want you to uh, clear the race line. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Understood. I mean, but that you would you'd have to be an, an incredibly like forward thinking. thinking. Yeah, you'd have I mean, to be. Jesus, like Alonso probably like would think of something like that and quickly yeah. like realize that you know. Actually, speaking of Alonso, though, he had a great race, and that did. to me that was. But but again, full this full, full this closure. I am an Alonso fan, but to me that that's, that's the least talked about. Um, uh, the great performance of that race, mm-hmm. uh, and somebody on Reddit pointed it out, and I completely agree that yes, it's it's like Alonso did a did a great job. He like yeah. he really 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 showed what that McLaren 
like actually beyond what the McLaren could do because it was, it, but those those were the those changing conditions are the ones that the 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 stars of the sport mm -hmm. really like and they really like it because you can really show what you can do. Lewis right. was saying the same thing. He's, he's like these changing conditions. Like that's that's what this is what I love. Mm -hmm. Um, and Alonso really showed. I mean, he showed button. I mean, say what you say about their performance. How in the dry and when they're like way at the back, right. you Rosberg could, too. He kept them behind. Yeah, he even he even kept behind uh, Rosberg, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. like, For think a long of, time. Think of the power differential of those two cars. That was that was insane. Yeah, yeah. that was that was insane that that Alonso was able to do that. But it's because he was he was finding the grip out there, and that's just something that. Like that they can count use. on Alonso, yeah, because right. of his experience, right. because of the way he drives. A lot of his great Smoothness. victories have been in the wet, uh, or grip driving performances. Um, yeah. And another driver that also has performed wet uh, well in the wet, um, was Sergio Perez. Yeah, he said. I was just gonna say, um, he said the exact same thing too in his post race interview. He's like, he was glad it rained because he he said. Uh, that he was hoping before the race, he's like, it's going to rain this weekend. I'm going to get to show what I can do. And he's like, nice. it rained and I came in there. That's, he what, he, that's what he said on Sky. There. <laughs> he willed it to existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did it. Vis visualization. <laughs> it, 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 we've seen that before. Remember that great drive that uh, Checo Perez had? I think it was in Malaysia 2012 when he almost caught Alonso. Like He almost beat Alonso. In Malaysia, if it wasn't because of like a, a fish tailing on that one corner, but other yeah. than that, he had the measure of Fernando Alonso and a much more powerful Ferrari. It was yeah, yeah. Sh and showing up his teammate too. Uh, Definitely going to break them, that record. Both of them actually. Um, Nico Hulkenberg, yes, he had a bit of a of bad luck here and there, and with the strategy, maybe they should have pitted uh, earlier. That's what Bob Fernley uh, said from Force India, but. Um, Perez like definitely was in better form than Nico Hulkenberg, and Alonso was definitely in better form uh, yeah. than Jensen Button. And Jensen Button is like a lot of people really admire his driving in changing conditions. Mm. So uh, he, he out qualified and out raced him one hundred percent. This this comes, I believe, from Sky. Uh, only three drivers: Sutil, Martini, and Alio. I don't know who that guy is. They've Competed in more Grand Prix than Hockenberg and not got on the podium. <laughs> so it's bad news for uh, Hockenberg. You might get in the, uh, he might, <laughs> might get to the top of that list too with Perez as his teammate. Because again, Sky was saying too that uh, you might have thought Perez, he's been performing, might get called up to a bigger team, but it, he's talking, uh, he might be signing for ready to sign well, another yeah, no, year with it was Two years. Or something that, that 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 was what I what I read, or at least the, but that it's been locked down. I think this guy just said on the post race that he's getting ready to sign another year, I guess with Force India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I don't know. It was it was apparently locked down. Like his his manager was there, in Monaco, and and that's the thing. Apparently, oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. It was it was. So he had to extra show off. Yeah. What he could do. And but after for a performance like that, unless it you know the story develops later that uh, he maybe found a drive with with another team. I think that if he confirms, if, if it's confirmed after in the next couple of days or by the next by 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 the Canadian Grand Prix that Checo Perez is staying with it for India, definitely like because Perez right now he'd be he'd be stupid to stay there, you know, or or, or not with to all finish that stuff until he finds out if VJ goes to jail or not. Right, <laughs> or unless unless though unless he's been disclosed something. Yeah, and here and here's the thing because they must we're talking know each other obviously. Well, yeah, so no, 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 but, up, right? no, but also like, like, don't worry, man, I'm not going to jail. Or, or not even that, but we, we're still talking about the potential. Introduction, like there's, there's, there's more interest in the sport. There's gonna be more money flowing in. Yeah. Um, it, it, Mexican money too. Yeah, Mexican money. Uh, a lot of Dutch money is definitely gonna, like you know you, you just European renewed yeah. interest in this sport and all that. There is a possibility that VJ Malia might still be lining up for India to be sold off to another team, to or to just to a manufacturer, or just somebody else with money. Mm -hmm. And because Force India is probably the only like actual profit generating um, company in the VJ Malia ownership 
of companies <laughs> and, and all the companies that he owns uh, or that he has assets for. I think if he wants to like stand a chance to like you know cash out and like leave his monetary troubles behind, he's probably gonna want to sell his F1 team. The mm -hmm. only thing that he owns a bit of that is generating money and requires traveling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot yeah. of traveling. <laughs> so you need a passport for that. With that, like we don't know. We don't know. Obviously, and this is just uh, you know the the wildest kind of speculation, the kind that we like. But I think that if Checo Perez was shown a clear plan and said, listen, stay with us. You're doing a great job. We like you. This is what we have in the pipelines. Nothing's 99% or, you know, nothing is, yeah. nothing is 100%, you know, locked down yet, but we're about 99% there. This is what's going to happen in, in a year. Like this is going to be, you know, whatever, like you name it. There's been all kinds of names. And like, this is going to be some sort of uh, Aston Martin team, or this is going to be, you know, whoever, uh, some, right. some sort of VW team. And right. there's going to be like that kind of money. And you're going to have the chance to, to win more race or, you know, to win races. Mm -hmm. You'd stay there mm -hmm. and you'd sign that contract. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd obviously try to on honor that. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. No, they have to, if, yeah. if a contract well, is legally, signed, right. If, if a contract is signed, but, yeah. If, if, if they don't honor it, that's the, that you can take them to court. Well, you can take him to arbitration, but yes, yeah but so, knowing how he faults on v, uh, vj malia how he faults on everything else i don't yeah. honor that <laughs> but his his f1 team and, and, and maybe that's that's why he hasn't been <laughs> that's why his f1 team is is uh, has not struggled whereas everything all, all of his other stuff has struggled yeah. is because it was built and it's built in such a way that you can't do any of those like any of the funny business that you can get away with in right. in India. You couldn't have gotten away with it with a team base in Britain. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean F one is just so prestigious. <laughs> 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 and there's so much scrutiny and, yeah. and, 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 and and that's the whole thing, right? With with everything, at least well, I for think now. you know, like we always talk about it, it, it is like sort of the you know, it is the pinnacle of motorsports. And with that there is a, a certain amount of like not respect, but like honor and like almost like high society, right? Seriousness that goes with it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you just can't fuck around with this, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, so, so, sorry, go ahead. What were we gonna say? Just go. I was gonna say let's. I'm gonna talk about the race a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. So that's exactly what I was gonna say. I was just looking at the uh, the standings here, so maybe we can start from the bottom and work up. All right. There were seven DNFs this race, <laughs> starting with. Jolene, Jolene crashed himself out on the main street. I know his name's Joel Young. Yeah, he, Jolene, uh, <laughs> Jolene. Mm. Yeah, he, he he crashed himself going going straight. He lost he lost the rear end of the car, went straight into the wall. Kimi Raikkonen caused a huge fucking mess. <laughs> he hit the yeah, wall, knocked out his front wing, and then dragged it. Just like a, uh, like a, he had like a bit of a up. bad bad turn right and just kind of yeah he just like wall. knocked his wing off and then kept driving he should have just stopped yeah i guess he thought he was gonna make it back to the pits and get a new wing well, probably, well, what, what he what he, he said is that he couldn't see how bad it was oh yeah and that's okay. it, it if you if he you didn't realize it, one of his wheels wasn't spinning i guess not i mean he, <laughs> yeah he, he must did have. yes he, he did have. yeah and when you see like the sparks coming out of one side <laughs> yeah actually there's some pretty cool pictures of that yeah. looked magical actually <laughs> <laughs> um Kvyat, he's uh, oh, kind, kind, of, kind of was being kind of a dick. He knocked out K Meg. He crashed into them into him uh, one lap before that. I think they touched, and then coming around again. Yeah. Kvyat was already I think two laps down at that point because oh, no. remember he, he had to stop at the start and he's yeah, that's right. cursing. This bullshit always happens to me. Or whatever. Yeah, I don't so know. He, anyways, he had to, he had to get his like car. He, he had to get his car rebooted. Yeah, he kind of deserves it. He had to get his car rebooted in the pits, and then he's two laps behind trying to get past K Mag. Yeah, and, and then he just tries to squeeze in and just. Yeah, ruined his race, knocked him out of the race <laughs> for no reason. It's so funny. Last year, like, Kivya was nowhere to be heard of, right? I'm not yeah. sure where he plays, but, like, I didn't, don't remember him from last year, and now we can, can't stop talking about it. Oh, you know why? It's because fucking Maldonado was around last year. Oh, yeah. Year. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to, had to, had to return. He crashed car. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's good. Uh, I think that was investigated after the race. He got three place penalty for Canada, so uh, he'll be starting three spots back. Max Verstappen. Wait, is, are you sure that that was Kvyat, or are you talking about yep. Ericsson? Yeah, he got one too. 
Kvyat got this was uh, after the race after I don't know this is uh, Kvyat, anyways Kvyat got three spot penalty for Canada because he crashed out Magnuson. He was oh very, yeah, both very of them unapologetic. Jesus, oh, you didn't believe me? No, I did believe you. <laughs> and then uh, Max Verstappen crashed himself out. Uh, Felipe Nasser and Ericsson. Uh, also crashed out and wait 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 I, th- I think I think you 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 glide you glided past the fact that Max Verstappen crashed himself out of court very very lightly here <laughs> let's, 18 year old Max Verstappen. like 18 year the hero of yeah, F1 a bit too late the hero of he didn't F1. crash as hard as last year last year was a bit yeah, crazy I thought he, he was dead last he year he doesn't it's, it, 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 well I guess well, Jesus two races is too 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 few to to make an informed like really opinion about it, but it seems like he doesn't like Monaco. Or that was his quote. I think exactly afterwards he said, "Monaco doesn't love me, and I don't love Monaco yet." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, two, two points, you know, generates a line, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Statistically, <laughs> the last the last two DNFs, um, the two Saubers, Ericsson admitted afterwards yes. that he did it on purpose. And he's also given a three place penalty for Canada. Wait, for did what on purpose? He crashed, crashed them out. The two crash ya! Crash ya! Or the two, the two, two Sabres crashed each other out. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, Ericsson did it on purpose. His teammate, I guess he got in big trouble. And uh, I don't know why he did that. <laughs> Rio Harianto finished four laps down. And uh, I don't know, he, he, he didn't get a penalty in the end, but he got some reprimand for disobeying blue flags. Like, he wasn't very good at letting people pass him. <laughs> And uh, no, <laughs> I think uh, Verline yeah. got two penalties in the race, two 10 second penalties, I think, and still managed to beat Herianto by two laps. Yeah, I think, uh, oh no, it wasn't the only penalties. Bottas also got a penalty. So, uh, moving up, Grosjean finished 13th, Bottas in 12th. Grosjean and Pascal Verline both two laps down, then back down up to the one lap downers. With Bottas. But Bottas also got a penalty. He crashed into Gutierrez, who finished ahead of him as well. Yes. In 11th. Massa in 10th in the points, one point. Jensen Button in 9th, two points. Carlos Sainz in 8th with four points. And then uh, hey, every, everybody behind Nico Rosberg in 7th. H- hang on a second. I, I just down. want to say something about Carlos Sainz because, you know, we, we did say earlier that he's, he's just kind of being consistent and whatever but yeah that third place and, and, and it's just just something that i um uh, it, it's just really that, that that third place uh, that uh, paris got could have gone to carlos Sainz because if it wasn't for that uh, sticky wheel, wheel nut remember during the pits oh. uh, Sainz went in and the Toros had a bit of a slow. That's right. And it, it, he, but he, if he had continued, like who knows what would have happened? Obviously, because yeah. it didn't happen. But yeah. <laughs> he could have that, that, that third, or at least a, 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 you know, a fourth place. But the podium was there in the cards mm. for um, for Carlos Sainz. And let's not forget that. I mean, uh, yes, he did finish one lap down though. So more than one lap. Yeah, he did. But there was a chance though. Yeah, Hulkenberg and Alonso. Hulkenberg. Uh, Past the other Nico Rosberg, <laughs> and uh, the, he beat he beat him by point two nine two eight nine seconds or something. They were like neck and neck right at the end. Alonso in fifth, that was pretty great, pretty 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 great. Eighty five seconds down, Vettel in fourth. One of the only real contenders was fifteen seconds down with behind uh, Perez who was thirteen. Ricardo in second, not too happy about that. Although he should have been. I never get these drivers that are like moping around and they're like, "Oh, we didn't do anything today. We should have done better. This was horrible. Like, it's not really acceptable as a team." And they're in second place. Yeah. Come on, man. He's second mm. place in the fucking Monaco <laughs> Grand Prix. He he, he did say <laughs> something like that. He was he, he he said like, "Oh, you know, I know that I shouldn't really be complaining." And he Jesus, this is Monaco, and there's a podium in Monaco. Yeah, he stopped smiling. He looked like he was about to cry. Yeah, he is. He was about to fucking beat somebody up. He was. He basically said like, "I just want to get out of here." Like, yeah. you know, I don't want to. He, the, the, his radio messages kind of reminded me of like how petulant Vettel could be when he was losing. He was like, "There's nothing that, to, to his team." He was like, "There's nothing you can do to save this. Just or no, there's nothing you can do to make me feel better. Just yeah. save it. Save it. Don't, don't talk to me." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> so what, yeah. what happened with that? What? Because it was that it was that stop, right? Okay. That stop so he, was the. He, he, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I want the Monaco break, break, break it down. Well, Monaco is different uh, than the other tracks uh, in in many respects. But one of the respects is that there is no pit wall. We know how. Right. Um, in in all in all the tracks, there's <laughs> your pit building here with yep. the garages on one yep. side. The pit lane and then here on the wall like what you know beside the start finish trade usually yeah. there's like the teams have like their main personnel there mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of room in monaco uh to do that and after like a, a few years ago this uh, this change was made so that now the pit the, or the people that would have been on the pit lane before now instead of going you know across from the garages they go on top of the garage there's like so there's your garage oh, and then wow. on top they build like a like a second building that looks out onto the pit lane where like the team principals and whatever that's where they chill right. just, there's not enough room there for the right. pit wall. Oh, there's okay. just not not enough room for a pit wall in the yeah. circuit so they just put it on top of the pits instead oh, of okay. so across from it. yeah two two things though and we, and we have to acknowledge that his in lap ricardo's in lap was incredible he was going so fast um the end lap is you know the the lap that you drive before going into the pits yeah so he showed up it was a snap decision to call him into the pits as it was mm. like it just they were trying to cover their bases and like trying to like out uh, i guess to pull something on the mercedes um when he got called it he went in so fast that that may have caught some people off guard mm. But also, if it was any other track, when when he was coming out and like the team principals or whatever, like the people that are usually in the pit in the pit uh, in the pit wall, there, if they would have seen like, hey, shit, like he's just there, they would have just you know, oh, this is all they would have had to do, turn around. They would have seen that their mechanics didn't have everything ready mm -hmm. and they didn't know that uh, which tire was uh, was supposed to be assigned, and they would have been like, yo, like just. Grab the supers, oh, you know, grab whatever, grab the intermediates. Problem solved. But because there wasn't that, and uh, my understanding is that the message came because uh, they basically just have a screen that tells the mechanics, you know, from that. There's not, there's not somebody like yelling from like up top to down saying like, "Hey, we're gonna pit." They just, yeah, yeah. there's a, there's, there's some sort light. of a screen that tells them they're gonna pit. But they didn't know what tires. Somehow it didn't uh, show them which tires, uh, and they couldn't just take that decision upon themselves. This is what Ted said uh, in the notebook. He's like, the mechanics just they can't just like, oh, like, oh, it's it's like, like oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that that strategy call would have been up to the strategies upstairs, but in the whole confusion and the fa I guess there is a problem which is that wasn't identified there. There there's a clear communication, ba uh, you know. Def like deficit mm -hmm. when it comes to at least that race is it an error that's going to be repeated i highly doubt it i right. think that they've identified that that was a problem mm -hmm. and they will fix it that's something that you as a team can fix quickly right, right. so they said, they said no excuse they also blamed it on the tight space that they had five sets of tight five different kinds of tires yeah. piled up inside the garage they're yeah. just like tripping over them and whatever it's somehow back so whatever. they just put on the wrong tires mm. It, or almost did. There's actually like a, a really funny video that uh, Formula Formula Awkward <laughs> posted on, uh, uh, on on Instagram. Here, go to the book. I just I just put it. It's like right at the bottom. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's uh, I, I, these guys. They've been doing these hilarious like short clips of uh, subtitle F1 scenes. Scenes. Just <laughs> check it out. Good at right. <laughs> Ace, mate. <laughs> that was Australian. Quotes. Yeah, here you go. What a plus the young man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Anyways, 18 points for him. No need to mope around. Come on. 18 points. He, well, he was, he, he, you know, it was my fucking time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there's 25 points for Lewis and only six for Nico. So, anyways, Lewis get, 
grabs 18, 19 points back. Remember when uh, when, when Johnny pretty Herbert pretty was pretty was telling Lewis Hamilton during the track parade that he he looked a bit grumpy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said it, he's like, what do you mean, man? <laughs> My headphones have to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a lot in of a, the interviews you see after the race though <laughs> Lewis Hamilton told Johnny Herbert get the fuck out of my way <laughs> almost knocked him over uh, a lot of people in the, in the post race like everyone or like uh, in the interviews with uh, Lewis Hamilton yeah. it, they were, he was saying it's like no I felt like I deserve this I own this and he did too I think like his own skill like he did the best he possibly could yeah, right. but sure, there was also a lot of factors that went into him winning outside of his control oh, yeah a lot oh he was like oh we're so goes. blessed like that yeah yeah hashtag blessed like oh come on man really? he said he didn't Jesus. feel lucky too yeah fucking he red bull he handed he didn't that. feel lucky yet <sighs> Red Bull handed that to yeah. them. Like, is, is that stupid? Dude? Well, then also Nico just having a slow car or, or for whatever reason. Well, Nico sucks at driving. Well, <laughs> li- <laughs> Jesus. But he has one. He has one, and, and that's a mystery of of, of Nico's Monaco, uh, Nico Rosberg's Monaco Grand Prix, because he had won the last three, won yeah, the last three uh, iterations of the of the Monaco Grand Prix. He didn't do so well in this one. He also didn't do so well the last time that it rained in Monaco in '08. Uh, it may just seem that he maybe has the track dialed down during dry conditions, but somehow as soon as there's a, pr- a sprinkling of rain, mm-hmm. he just can't have it. He said, he came out and said, he wasn't even like uh, trying to hide it. He's uh, This guy, he's, he's, he's taking a turn for maybe, you know, coming out and just telling it how it is. Maybe he, he realized that that's the only I, way I to do it. I appreciated like his... Um, yeah. Like his candor afterwards, he's like, man, I just didn't, you know. Well, and, and the, had that been Lewis, man, pff, he no, would have exploded. Exactly, and that's the thing. He he came out and he said he admitted it. He said, yeah. listen, I just couldn't find the limit in the guy. He's like, I just he's he's he, he said that if I if he had pushed a little more, he knew that he was gonna end up in the wall. He's mm-hmm. like, that's just, that was just the end of my ability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he didn't say that, but he basically that was the idea. Yeah, that, was, like, the that, that was the end of my abilities today. Right. And he and so at, at around lap fifteen, apparently he was warned by the team because apparently this is something that Mercedes has internally. Um, if a driver that's uh, ahead of, out of the two Mercedes, if a driver is ahead and he doesn't have the pace to win, then he can be it's I guess built into the contract or whatever. He can be asked by the pit wall to see the position right and so they warn him on, on lap 15 yo you gotta pick up the pace otherwise we're gonna have to ask you to let lewis go mm-hmm. uh, go past and that's what i was saying when we watched the race they should have done that earlier well yeah i know and and they they did they called him in uh, for lap 16 he had nothing to he, he didn't get any better with the pace and he mm-hmm. let lewis through yeah now, was that like a, a gentlemanly thing to do, or you know, or like he's or, honoring a contract sort of thing to do? But, but or, or you know, is is he playing like the team game or whatever? Yeah. I think it's as a as a yeah as, as 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 a coming out of what happened uh, last week. Uh, wait, are we not? What's going on? What are you saying? Yeah, I don't know. Are we live right now? Are yeah. you sure? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah look, we're live. Okay. Apologies to everybody for Danny's paranoia. <laughs> no, paranoia. You, you weren't supposed to stop talking. Yeah. Uh, so it was a gesture. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say, either way, uh, Nico Rosberg, was he playing it uh, safe? Was he playing the team game? Um, or is this just what came out of that discussion from uh, from Barcelona? He, mm-hmm. Barcelona must have been very, very, very recent in everybody's mind and before they would have all have gotten the briefing and especially nico who's he doesn't let's be honest like he he probably does want to stick around with mercedes as yeah. much as people say that he that he has other Ooh, options right right like his contract is done at the end of this year he probably knows now and especially after barcelona that he has to play ball with the team right he, he, he can't be going around and saying and putting his own interests ahead of the team because well is he known for that he he, one could say that he might have he would have done that in the past. You know, like what? Yeah. Jesus, he well, like, as he, much as Lewis Hamilton. I think he was maybe he would have, he, he would have done that more last year. Okay. You remember how last year he basically tried everything. He tried cheating. He tried like he actually tried like behaving and, and nothing. He couldn't win. All right. Yeah, but anyway, just it that's. Huh. 
It's simply my take on that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I think Rosberg knew his parents were watching too. <laughs> He's going to keep it calm. <laughs> yeah. He did that YouTube video from his parents' house after. Oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> I guess I it's, it's his hometown. <laughs> Probably all, all his grade school teachers are watching on TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I saw this thing on Reddit. Uh, how it, There was even uh, this, this Australian sports betting website. Apparently gave... Don't give them any advertising. No, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that they just... They give people money back. They refunded all the, anyone's bets who took a punt on Rosberg win or um, Ricardo's win. Oh, I saw that. What the fuck was that about? Yeah, it's clearly some sort some of publicity. marketing exercise, yeah. of course. Yeah. Ugh, that's gross, man. <laughs> but that's you know, gross. I, I, it just that, that just goes to like show like, everybody in, in in Australia was pissed off. Like mm. <laughs> <laughs> they called Lewis Hamilton a twerp. <laughs> yeah. That twerp Lewis ruined his race. <laughs> in this statement the fuck was that yeah play that again put your mic up to your laptop <laughs> oh yeah quality here oh yeah this is this is how we do it <laughs> that's Danny Rick right yeah that's Danny Rick throw up that picture of him's middle finger too this is something I wanted to talk about this weekend oh shit uh what's up with all the F-bombs in Formula 1 yeah, they, they, it's they, called they, Formula 1 not fuck 1 that's not what the F stands for. Yeah. Since the start of the season, man, all the way since Australia, there were, yeah, here's Danny Rick giving the finger to somebody as they passed when he was going Can to the pits. Yes. To, to who? Who was it? Reckoning. To really? Reckoning. Yeah, I forget. I forgot. Wait, wait, this is Monaco. This was in yes, Monaco. Yes, yes. Yeah, this was just uh, he uh, just as he was pulling into the pits, he's going. You can, oh, I can barely see his steering wheel. Looks like he's going like sixty-four or ninety-four kilometers an hour. He's going pretty slow. He just gave the finger to whoever was just about passing him, Raikkonen, as he yes. said. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't catch that during the race. No, it wasn't during the race. In, uh, oh. yeah, it was uh, the, on uh, Saturday, I think. Quali. Oh, in yeah. quali. Yeah. But yeah, well, it's ever since the first race. I think it was um, uh, K Mag. Uh, okay, sorry. Max Verstappen in the first race, he was yelling on the radio, cursing, like, who the fuck get this car out of my fucking way? I can go faster than him, whatever. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it was a, a big deal was made about it, and he had to apologize publicly to everybody, right? To the world uh -huh. for saying F on TV. You can't say that, right? World, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it. That's, yeah. that's where it started, though. And then, um, w what the fuck is it called? G Grosjean was uh, making blame at the last race in uh, Q2. Sebastian he... Vettel. Honestly. Yeah, no, his, 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 Vettel at Russia. He's yeah, yelling, yeah. what the fuck are we doing here? And he crashed his car into the wall. Or we get, got crashed into the wall. Yeah. Uh, Grosjean uh, at Spain didn't make it into Q2. And he said uh, something, uh, um, I think it was on the radio as well. He said... Something, what the fuck is this? What the fuck are we doing? Like, this is like something about being unorganized. The, uh, th somebody's pit timing or something screwed him out of, mm. out of his Q2 time. Uh, Vassar from, uh, from Renault, he's talking about Kvyat when K Meg got crashed out yesterday. He said he was driving like a fucking maniac. <laughs> he said that on television as well. Uh, it's gone crazy, man. Yeah, it's, it's... Is, was there some sort of backroom talk? Like, Let's get some let's publicity. Get, let's drop some F bombs. Let's, 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 let's it's up the it's okay talk. to say fucking F one now. Yeah, this it's crazy, man. World, and world class sport here. It's <laughs> yeah. so world class. Well, somehow maybe it has to do with the the radio ban because mm -hmm. there's less interesting normal stuff happening. So they're just like right. throwing up all the, the fucks that they, any fuck that they catch because yeah. they're not allowed to talk that much. True. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> the, uh, the, yeah, what the hell is going on? Uh, Kvyat yesterday, he said, uh, it's like, what has always happened to me? I had a fucking shitty day. <laughs> That's a direct quote. <laughs> and it's like, this weekend, him. it's a, it's Yeah, apparently was crying up, when, when he said that, or he sounded like he was crying. Like, this always happens to me. It's been going up exponentially, though. Yeah. Like, this weekend, there was, like, five or six, plus this middle finger. And, uh, by the way, Danny Rick is the new Fatal, right? He's yeah. in his seat. Yeah. He's giving the wrong finger. It's the one beside that. You're supposed to point number one, not the middle one. You see that? It's it's look at if you see me on the camera. It's very close. They're similar. They're very similar. <laughs> but the middle finger is rude. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, they're very know, close man. in proximity, right? The two. Yeah, I don't. Know. It's that's all the facts I can remember from this year so far. But I'm sure there were a couple more. What's going on? It might be that. It might be, and, and that, that the the radio ban is something that. They're not even on the radio, even though most of like, them have been. Most of them have been. Well, I know, but what, what you said about how the radio ban may be affecting this, it's 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 true. It could be that, and not that there's they're a lot being of like said. Maybe they've always the, been said. The fanhood is is is, is definitely, and the, the 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 sport is as a whole. The people that that, that comment on the sport have had a backlash on this radio ban. They, they, people don't seem to like it, uh, how it's turned out. It was, I guess, a good in theory because. Uh, of what you could of of the kind of information that was being passed on before with the tried the drivers at the pit lane but now it's just it's it's too quiet i i kind of do mm. miss those days when um the races like you would hear like so many radio messages yeah <laughs> and uh <coughs> yeah maybe the the f's have always been there but they just skipped over them because yeah. there was just more more other stuff to 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 pack. Sorry, i have a question yes i'm gonna race this finger so uh <laughs> in, in sort of response to this um radio talk silence stuff how much do you think that's affected the actual racing that's gone on not like this sort of chatter but like the fact that you can only say certain things has that really changed the, the, Listen, it's the, it's hard to tell at this point because it's the first year that it's been implemented. It's what still if, early in the season too. Yeah. It might evolve a little bit. But we yeah. haven't really heard any like code words or suspected code words or stuff like we thought. Ooh, yeah. Listen, yeah. it could it could be that if you start analyzing that, you could fall into the trap that um, you might find some correlation. But you know, correlation doesn't not, might not mean causation and uh, causation in all in all in all circumstances. Right. right. And you, if you if you let's say draw a line of when the introduction to um of, of this radio ban was which is the beginning of this year mm -hmm. even and last you, year they had a, a light radio ban leading in last year right true it's, it start started then a little yeah it kind of did start but if if you say like hard line and how was it was f1 exciting before were there, were there better races before the radio ban mm -hmm. you can't say with a straight phrase that that's yeah, I wouldn't say what the radio was, has made the race more or less also, exciting. Exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it has, though. Cause, like, that thing that just happened with Danny Rick wouldn't have happened probably without the radio ban. Or maybe it would have. But or, or or even somehow, even like, last year's. Or, sorry, last race. I don't know when, exactly what they're allowed to say about you know the how, pits, but he requested the tire chain no, the switch up of strategy yesterday, Danny Rick. Which is why they were scrambling because he, yeah. he wanted the, the other the softer compound. And Lewis also even said that he was the one that requested the uh, the pit. I really, I really like the idea that we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I stole this from somebody on Reddit. Sorry, <laughs> I can't uh, give you credit, whoever it was. But the same way that the DRS system works, when you pull up one second behind the guy in front of you, and you pass that line, you hit the button, and you get to pass. Mm -hmm. There's already 50 buttons on the steering wheel. Add one more. And when you get within a second of the guy ahead of you, yeah. you can talk into his ear. With your with the one button, you the guy one second ahead. You can be like, "Hey, get the fuck out of my way!" <laughs> oh, really? Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think we started to talk about this a couple weeks. Ago, yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea, right? Yeah, or the yeah. guy behind. The, maybe you have two buttons: one ahead, one behind. If there's somebody yes. behind, you can <laughs> respond because you got to be able to talk back, right? Yeah. yeah. Or it could, oh, it could, man, it could be one of what, <laughs> what it, it could be one of those things that it's it's not even like uh, who's who's ahead or who's behind, but it could be like a, a proximity thing, like whoever's like near you can hear you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, within one second, just yeah, like, whatever, some, yeah, some sort of uh, bow. Yeah. <laughs> Or like some sort of like just general chat room, like in yeah. a virtual space where like they all are just talking to each other while driving. But yeah, like, maybe, 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 the, and if you're if you're within two second, the one can, second of two then drivers, it's louder. they both hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and 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 then you can just be like to to fucking Rio Harriento Rio, just just move, man. Just come on, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> That would be pretty funny. Tweet me some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Text me some dollars. Um, but yeah, apparently, so the, the the thing that made Lewis's race was definitely the fact that he could drive, like he he drove a lot of laps with those wet tires, and then he went and switched straight to the ultra softs, and made those ultra soft last over forty laps. Right. That like, seemed a little ridiculous. To it, me. These were supposed <laughs> to be the softest tires. Yeah, right? but yeah, something. Hold on, give me one. Keep talking for one well, sec. It, I gotta find it. Um, 
that's another thing that uh, Ted was talking about during the during his notebook is that listen, what happened is uh, they I guess the the strategists they analyzed the weather conditions. They said in these changing weather, because everybody else is going to be going slow and everybody's going to be going slow, there is a lot more that you can do to conserve the tires. So let's just take a gamble. Hey, Lewis, how do you feel about this? Can you do? Do you think that you're going to be able to? To nurse him for that many laps and he did and he did with the wet tires and he did with the ultra soft and mm. that's really what gave him the what gave him the opportunity now it was it the best drive of the race no i would i would give that to somebody else but he People was are calling for rule changes because of his uh he, he cut the corner by accident and went the okay. one lap yeah, yeah, yeah. One, he missed one corner in, <laughs> in the whole race come on but he, oh, he did a great where, job where, where ricardo was about to overtake him yeah, and he, yeah. then he cut him off yeah. right after yeah yeah mm-hmm but anyways, P- Pirelli, uh, j- related to that, the ultra soft, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, their their quote was, for this weekend, don't worry, that ultra soft is not a quali special, is what he said. It's a serious race tire. And he's like, you, it's reflected in the, yeah. the team's choices. Most teams had 9, 10, or 11 sets of the ultra soft. 9 yeah. or 10 sets, right? They yeah. As many as they could take. And... Uh, Again, I think this was a record, as Ted was saying there, there were five kinds of tires, not available, that were used. Yes. They've been available the whole season. Five kinds of tires were used this race. That's It's got to be a Formula One first. Yeah, I think so. I think the, the most ever. Like, you feel strongly about this. You were saying that, that there should really only be two tires. You only need two, really, right? Like, you could have a wet tire and a dry tire. No, but that's that's, that's kind of like... Once for water. That's what uh, Formula 3 does, for example, and, and many other series. And yeah, it just, that's, it's, yeah right? this, is, this is better, for sure. It opens a strategy. <laughs> it's, they have the money for it. Those teams, use, those sports use one because it's cheap. Yes. Right? You have one race spec tire. Right. Everybody's on that no, no, same. Nothing's cheap, but There's less no, expensive, let's say. Yeah, they're less expensive. <laughs> yeah, like I, I bought some two cars for my, uh, or two tires for my car. They're like $300. <laughs> so now imagine race tire. tires. No, yeah, not even race. They're just regu- used road tires. <laughs> I mean, I bought them used. I actually really like that part of uh, F1. Uh, which is the tire strategy, yeah. and then Pirelli setting it up. Yeah, because I think it adds like that little bit of extra um, like meta and thinking. Like, because then there's like, because we got what happened to uh, yesterday in Monaco with R- Ricardo. Like that wouldn't have happened unless like the tire situation was a little more straightforward and right, just simple. Oh yeah, right? yeah. No, it's if true. it was just like wet and dry, you're like, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. But like this adds like this other extra layer of excitement. And don't forget the X wet. We talked about it a, a few months ago. There's a chance there's That's an X wet possibly next coming year. to racing. Yeah, who, who not? Pirelli may have been testing some stuff yeah. for a road tire tech or something like that. But I think that's for F1. And before the season started, Pirelli actually originally wanted six different types of dry tires. They Jesus. wanted an ultra hard, and it's not been out of the question for next year that they, they might yeah. introduce it next year. There might be a sixth dry tire and a third wet tire. To make so it, we might have nine, nine, different, nine tires. different types. So wait, wait, the what's the difference <laughs> between like the wet tires we saw at Monaco and then X wets? No, no, no. I don't know. We, the same? Remember what we talked about the X wet? They did. It was in uh, maybe it was in postseason testing last year. Yeah, it's, some, some they between. said that they were gonna test for the X wet, but the way what they were really testing was the ultra softs. Yeah, bastards. But X wet is not out of the equation, basically. Yeah, they they yeah. had sort of they, there was a kind of a, a screwy weekend. They had like some placebo tires, and they they were all like unmarked. They had teams just blinding, blindly doing the best laps they could on different types. Yeah. And I think even those for those ultra softs, they had two or three potential ultra soft. But I don't know. In that same article, put in the same quote, there Pirelli said, uh, "Make no mistake, these are the ultimate pinnacle of our racing tire technology, the ultra soft." Oh wow. Nice. But at the same time, they're no softer than the super softs were like two years ago because they moved all the tires two steps. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Anyway, that's enough about Pirelli, I guess. <laughs> Another thing that happened during uh, the weekend, the, the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, is that Ra- Renault brought their uh, their B spec engine, um, their, mm-hmm. and they they only did it for one driver of each of each of the, of the two Renault teams. That's another reason Danny Danny Rick couldn't shouldn't be complaining. He he got the new engine, and, got, and he got to show it. Yeah. Luckily, they didn't give it to Max Verstappen because he crashed his car twice. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, but yeah. he was he was mad even there. With I think 
I don't know. Forget, I forgot that he had a new engine. He had the new he, engine. He said at the so last last thing. He said at the end of the at the end of the race when they asked him, "How was that?" What, and he's like, "I don't know if I could describe it without swearing." Oh yeah, <laughs> he said that too. Uh, but <laughs> but he he got the new engine and clearly it worked for him. Yeah. Now here's one he thing. Made it work too. Remember though that and obviously like the the, the lab times around Monaco like are not representative of of you know of how it is but it. It's with that in context uh, and thinking of how Monaco is going to be one of the slowest uh, and one of the, I guess, one of the shortest laps. We just broke the record too, didn't he? In qualifying? They did. Oh, yeah, I, forgot so about, just... I forgot about this one. That was another middle finger from him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, what I was going to say is that... Uh, bearing in mind that Monaco is already a pretty short lap around. Right, right, right. Uh, now, Renault was, uh, showed up and said that, listen, this is going to be, this new engine is going to be like a second and a half, um, like uh, uh, in, in terms of lap time, faster than the older engine. I you did a little bit of digging, and at least in qualifying pace for Monaco, though, and you gotta, you got to remember that, um, you couldn't really see what... Um, what Ricciardo versus Verstappen did because you know Verstappen got it Verstotaled, uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, but if you looked at uh, what happened during uh, oh, sorry for the Renault team for the Renault Works the team during Q1 you can't compare Q2 and Q3 because <laughs> Jolene didn't make it past uh, Q3. He also crashed his car two times this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> yeah, but just during Q1 Badly. with with what you could assume would be similar. Um, loads in terms of uh, fuel loads and whatever else similar setup at that point mm -hmm. um, their fastest laps were uh, for Magnussen 116.253 and for uh, Palmer 116.586 a difference of a third of a second mm -hmm. now yeah when your car comes out looking like that <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, a third of a second ahead uh, now, you could attribute some of that to actually just driving skill mm -hmm. uh, of Magnussen versus Palmer, and you could st stick around all day here and like <laughs> compare them both. But if we just assume that they had similar abilities and a similar car, um, a third of a second speed or uh, yeah, time advantage in Monaco could actually translate to one and a half seconds doing the normal race so that claim i think didn't come out of nowhere you can clearly see that this new engine is a big step forward mm -hmm. and it's definitely going to help and they're only going to get it better right like this was the the first appearance of that um J tji uh, the tji uh, the turbo jet ignition e engine and they can only make it better or you know I, actually i guess they could yeah. screw it up but they, there is a lot this is the first iteration they can definitely work on making it better uh the renault engine maybe will be a strong contender in the future and maybe that's why uh red bull has decided to sign with them for the next two years actually do you hear about that R ricardo no 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 red bull overall like the the oh, team red the, bull the team yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They, they secured they Renault for the next two years i did read that yes so but and you can see that their new engine is actually a step forward it's mm -hmm. i mean as much as we bashed <laughs> Renault all of last year and this yeah. year uh so far Clearly, this B spec, they they they've yeah. done something good. Clearly, Red Bull's confident. Yeah. As a, like I don't, what it's too much to really show on the podcast here. But if you guys want to look it up, uh, Red Bull just sort of unveiled their new simulator. I was just talking about. Oh yeah. So, it, it, I didn't really know this. Mercedes, a lot of their advantage, I guess, or a big part of it, has come from their simulator, which I was telling you before the show. Yeah. They have their simulator, so the drivers sitting like we've all seen like big screen like a, basically a vi playing a video game mm -hmm. and mercedes has connected to exactly what the driver's doing his throttle his braking and the stress at the loads he's putting into the tires and stuff yeah. in a separate room beside the simulator they have one of their f1 engines dri full drive train and transmission attached to some sort of load simulator on on oh, the wow. drive shaft and they're running it with all the stresses and everything as Connected to happening. the simulator. Wow, So cool. Red Bull have gone, I would say, maybe more than one step further for this year. They, they've, they've now got a 360 simulator. So yeah. the, the driver sits in a full 
degrees of motion moving platform with a 360 screen on it. And then in their separate room, they now have, and I, I believe they split this with the, with, they partnered with the Renault to develop and build it. Okay. In the separate room, they have a rolling floor system. So it's basically a rolling road with the full car sitting on it. They can simulate the full, put the whatever tires on it. The entire oh car God. with the engine is running there on gasoline. All the stresses, including temperature and weather conditions, can be simulated in that room. So they're basically driving the car in a room as the driver is driving the simulator in another room. That's video insane. Game that is so cool. It's so crazy. Yeah. Wow. So they just unveiled it like in the past day or two. But you can you can see a whole bunch of pictures. This company called C R U D E N Cruden. They make some pretty serious race simulators that looks like they developed it. It costed millions. You can't buy one. <laughs> I want one so though. I want to at least it. try it. Come on, Come, let me invite me over, guys. <laughs> I'll bring snacks. I think it another... think looks amazing. Well, I think oh, they're hoping. I guess that's gonna bring their advantage in the next couple of years. I, I guess could very well do. And it would be funny if they uh, built this thing, and then the rules just changed. The cars have to be wider, and their ro their rolling road. It's, it's not wide it's, enough. It's wide enough for the fit the for these new cars. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think that they would have covered for that. I think so. I think they're probably all right. Hey, listen, another interesting thing that, to me at least, came out of the Monaco Grand Prix is how the the standings look at this point of, of, of the championship. But let's, let's just review that for a second. We're talking about the one, two, Rosberg's three being... still up there. Yeah, Rosberg. But Lewis... 106. Yeah, the... the, the, the the delta in between Lewis and, uh, and Nico has gone down by oh, two, 19 only, points. Yeah, only to yeah, whatever it is. I can't do simple what's, math. But what's the total? There? 18, 24. You're talking about yeah. Uh, he just yeah, gained 19 off this race. Yeah, but third and fourth are interesting because it's Daniel Ricciardo and Kimi Raikkonen, not Sebastian Vettel. Mm. Vettel is sitting all the way down in fifth mm -hmm. overall. And look at Max, followed by Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen right there, and he started most of the season so far in the Toro Rosso, yeah. in, the super, in the inferior car. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, so oh, it doesn't really matter. It, it just ma matters on the driver. And yeah, that's the, your, your driver's points. Yeah. The driver's points. Okay. There's also the, the constructor, constructor but the constructor keeps their points. So yes, yeah. okay. uh, the points that Max scored for Toro Rosso, they Same. they kept. Oh, okay. it. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. part of the drivers' championship, and the constructor championship points are attached to the vehicle, the car. Yeah. Um. But okay, so now that we're talking about the constructors, let's look at what the constructors championship uh, is. The standings are right now: Mercedes, Ferrari, to uh, to Red Bull, then Williams and Force India, Force India wow. right there. Looking, I mean, Mercedes to Ferrari is uh, sixty-seven points there. Yeah, that's a little big gap. But look, this this gap here in between Ferrari and Red Bull. 121 to 112 yeah, that's, points. That's, that's less small. than a race. That's nine points. If Ferrari fuck up in Canada, Red Bull could very well take that third spot. Hmm. Very or sorry, that second spot. That they're, they're already third. Red Bull could be the number two constructor. If oh. especially if maybe if if they show up um, to Montreal with both new engines, and if it's a beautiful day in Montreal where hmm. it doesn't rain, I think. Um, perhaps Red Bull might take, I mean, uh, a serious amount of points to even go and battle Ferrari, unless Ferrari so, does do, do something. You wonder if uh, at this point, if all this thing last year about the Tag Heuer and uh, we don't want to use a Renault yeah. or whatever, all that animosity that yeah. they had. I wonder if any of that was Renault's idea, because they're like, man, we're buying this. Lotus is kind of a piece of shit. Their factory is a mess. It's going to mm -hmm. take us a good year to clean up get a car sorted out we're going to a whole new system he's like for one year they're gonna smash us maybe we shouldn't call it a Renault maybe it was partly their idea or maybe maybe when they heard it they weren't too offended yeah <laughs> like let, let them let them call it whatever they want I mean, you see more and more people nobody nobody like we, we've gone through the whole well I mean, through five races now and Maybe like during the first race weekend, you could see some people calling it the Tag Hoya engine, but now nobody calls it that. Everybody like everybody see, refers to it as a Renault engine. What happened to Cyril Abitibul? He was at a fucking every press conference That's and true. he was interviewed yeah. every single weekend leading up to the season and into it, into the start of the season. Yeah, and then, and then he's gone, vanished. He he was on TV every day. That guy. 
<laughs> talking about Renault come, Renault come back uh, blah 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 it's gonna be great <laughs> crazy yeah yeah I don't know uh, one last thing with Kvyat after qualifying he was investigated and not penalized see somehow they got away because he hit uh, he touched the wall remember that like one millimeter wall touch or whatever oh, yeah. they blamed that they, he failed the floor test which is another just a random technical test yeah the FIA will just choose a car and we're gonna do the floor test and you know like there's like the flat part of the car that sticks yeah. out the sides of the floor mm-hmm. it has to withstand 4,000 newtons of weight on it and not bend more than five millimeters and his did his would one more so the reason is that when the car is moving really fast the downforce can change the shape of it and mm. bend it which is a red bull got cut uh, for that a couple of years ago the oh rubber shit. nose did you ever see that i i think i heard you guys talk about it yeah they had a, they had a rubber nose that basically yeah. like as the car went faster it, it would just bend down a, a few millimeters and add downforce and or thus was the speculation but okay, yes. whatever whatever it was doing yeah. maybe it was part muppet i'm not sure <laughs> but the flo- anyways because yeah, i failed this floor test they blamed it on the the a little crash there you got away with that one mm. well he should have probably got a penalty for that but well, i guess he got his own penalty because his uh car needed a reboot so that was it. that was his karma for the weekend i don't know williams williams killed their pit stop again they've got every pit stop this season the fastest yeah every se- every race so far you got the times here they're all under that's, two seconds 2.3527 that's about the only two, three, news one, coming two, from four, williams three. though <laughs> <laughs> well, part, part of this, I don't know if we, we sort of talked about this a little yeah. bit, was that they're being, or they've been contracted by the British hospital system or something like that. Some sort of hospital administration. Oh, for, because uh, their software and their... Their, their yeah. ho- software and just know-how of where people should be standing in an operating room for certain for surgeries and for premature babies, I think it is. Oh, shit. Yeah, so they're using wow. Williams technology. Like, the way they communicate and, like, the lights, they, they do stuff like... When the tire bolt comes on, then the dr- all, when all four of them come on, that sets off a signal and the driver note, the whatever, the guy knows to drop the thing. They all just have oh, like, wow. lights that's all connected. Anyway, all their systems, their software, and just their know-how of where the guys are standing to not get in people's, like, reaching over each other and under. Wow. They're, yeah, they're using that for... Oh, for that's for, cool. They've been, uh, yeah, helping out the surgery. The, the technology side of, the, of, of the Williams news. organization, uh, also, I guess when they realized that they had to diversify and like really start doing other stuff other than F1 mm-hmm. to be able to survive and to have the kinds of budgets that F1 requires, mm-hmm. yeah. then they, they have been doing some interesting stuff with the technology that they developed for F1 and then applying it to other fields. And they've been lucky. I think they've been partnered with uh, uh, a few British hospitals before. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, they've, what they've done uh, before is I think they... The, the software that handle all the telemetry coming in and you know mm. the, the, the kind of th- those kind of th- signals like their their intelligence of like built into their software of like you know when Translate when this and this mesh metric is like it's and... is below this and that like pop up this signal or alert this or like whatever so yeah it, exactly so you, it, with that they the it's going down it needs juice or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> some juice. and and yeah. for like say like all the patients in one in one wing like tie all their metrics to, to one to computer sort of chart yeah wow. yeah that's what williams is doing yeah and also this week they've been in the news too saying uh they're determined to own the decision on drivers for this season so i guess they've got some money set aside for uh the best of the best so well, i don't know if bottas and then uh Felipe. massa's gonna be uh, around next year or what but they said they're determined to own it and they're gonna be deciding who goes where well let's see let's see let's see so the, we'll see. the validity yeah. of that claim Okay, because you have, I think that they can't say them. It's a bit far fetched, but let's look at it. So we're talking about a Mercedes team with most likely retaining uh, their current lineup. But some people are saying that Rosberg's yeah, chances he's been, are looking rocky. But if if Rosberg he's in negotiations, but if Rosberg is the championship leader still and has shown, I mean, it's he. He probably will choose to stay with with Mercedes until until something, unless something happens, right? He didn't look too happy in his post race video. Here's an interesting fact about Rosberg: going into this race, if he had won six more this season, mm-hmm. there was zero chance of Hamilton 
winning the Even championship. Even if he finished second this, every time, yeah. Or yeah. Something. But now he finished like seventh or whatever. He doesn't have enough points for that to be. He probably has to win like nine or ten now. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it's yeah. just the truth. There's, yeah. The chance is wide open. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Because oh. he he got uh, he got seven seven points or seventh place or whatever four points or whatever, but uh, Hamilton won, so it's like Hamilton would have had to do bad too for him to keep his uh, his gap. Yeah. His gap is small. It's, his gap is less than a race now too. If, yeah, yeah, could be one race and Lewis could be in the lead now. But yeah, th- those two guys probably not going anywhere. Oh no, well yeah. So th- and that's and that closes off Mercedes. Yeah, uh, Ferrari the is Red Bulls are locked. I think too. Red Bulls are, are locked. Ferrari is looking most pretty likely. likely to keep re- reckoning another year. So if you take those those the three top teams basically uh, off the market, then yes, then you could say that Williams is the next big thing, and and they're the ones that are gonna be like shuffling the uh, the market as we enter into mm-hmm. what some people call the silly season where. When we start to speculate, which, which yeah, well, obviously they can't, you can't buy buy drivers with uh, contracts. But uh, anyway, they said they're waiting. They're not waiting around for the other teams to make up their minds this year, sure. which I guess they kind of did last year. Just yeah. how they got ended up with these guys, the Ferrari throwaways, and uh, I don't know wherever Bottas came from. Well, what Bottas came from <laughs> Williams, but it's yeah. space. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like Finland. before that. But yeah. no, he, he, he he's definitely not as proud, not shown as much promise this year as he as he had. He, he's a driver that by now I think if you judge by how he was before uh, in his first couple of years in F one, mm-hmm. I would have assumed that by now he would have been like winning races and 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 being like a powerful player in F one. Right. He like showed that much. So talent. people thought in the beginning, yeah. But he has he's been quiet this year. And uh, yeah, not that great. And and Williams has been quiet as a team, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not not doing a whole ton of stuff. Another bunch of bullshit that's been annoying me for like, like years now. This weekend they came up the helmet stuff. Everyone's special helmets and whatever. Oh, yeah. I got a Monaco helmet, <laughs> and then so so many drivers showed up with their own helmets. Yeah. See, what, what used to happen was, and what I used to like was, Vettel used to show up, and a couple other drivers just change them all the time. Those helmets are worth, uh, like, twenty or $30,000, so not everyone wow. could afford to. But Vettel was doing stuff, like, giving away for charity, but he, I think he just kept them in his house. He probably has a room full of helmets on shelves. Like, cool. this is the one I won this race with, and he had, like, different artists. Everyone was different. Like, he come with a blue one, a red one, a silver one, all different shit on it. Oh, he cool. was doing that forever, and... Did just for whatever reason, Bernie Eccleston's like, no, nah, you can't change them because nobody knows who they are anymore. Mm. They were about to throw a fucking halo on top of everyone's head. So that's a whole bunch of bullshit. Everyone yeah. saw yeah, through that. Right. From, I saw through it from the beginning anyways because I've been complaining. Yeah. Everyone showed up with these special helmets and then the FIA said something like, oh, well, I guess we've relaxed the rules for this weekend because they put into the rules after all the drivers complained, you were allowed one helmet change. Right for the season or you could change your helmet with a slight differences but then i don't think it was ever clarified if that one change was you change your helmet and then you have that helmet for the rest of the year Mm. like halfway through or whatever you want to change it or if you can change your helmet and wear a different one for one race weekend only and then you have to wear the original one for the other 19 races right i don't think that was ever clarified no so yeah so the fia is like oh fuck like 20 races this year by the way yeah with the other 19 that you weren't wearing that one special one but there's 21 races this year. So. 21. Okay, well, whatever. I, the, <laughs> <laughs> this fucking bullshit. The, it's so dumb. The, you can't see the helmets from behind anyway. You can see that T bar from behind. True. I think there's a bit of weirdness about people wanting to say the second driver or something that has the yellow one or the, the yellow driver. Is, yeah. That's what it would be called if they had to do that. But now they have to. They're going to say like... Pff, like you get to design your own halo or something and you can't change that now Fuck yeah, yeah come on come on come on yeah like if say like you see a car any car any car on the grid crashes Be into right the wall this. crashes into the wall usually you see that from behind right you don't have to see the helmet because you see that t above the driver's head and you know yeah. who it is immediately yeah yeah no i i, I thought I, it was i tend to agree with you I, I mean for me like getting into the sport it was difficult to uh, it was difficult to see exactly who was driving. 
Um, so, so, so yeah, so you're new to the sport, and yeah, you, when you try to recognize the drivers, what are you looking at? Uh, like when you look it's at the literally track? just like the main color of their helmet. Oh, okay. It's the main color because like everything else, like the numbers are one thing, but like, uh, like yeah, they got the Rosberg, numbers. Rosberg and uh, Hamilton. Like I can tell the difference between them now. You know what I mean? I usually everything else is the same except for the number. On, on the actual car, right? I agree. You can't see that T bar when they have the onboard camera. I mean, but you can only see like that much of the helmet, though. Like a right, little wedge right. at the bottom of the TV screen where the head is in the way of the mm-hmm. camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I agree with you, man. I I would like to see see like yeah, you should be able to wear cool whatever helmets. helmet you want. I almost think there's like a um, a reason due to like sponsorship and stuff like that, right? Because like who's, yeah, that's Mercedes, part of it. But you can Mercedes still has got put- like monster on their helmet right you can still have that if you go yeah. back and look at Vettel's helmets they were yeah. awesome they were all yeah. awesome and like the one he came with this weekend too he came with the um whatever it was like the leather leather type looking one whatever yeah. it was yeah oh yeah. that's pretty cool in hockey the goalies have like yeah that's another crazy awesome helmets you're like oh that's so sick they're, but they're allowed to change it whenever yeah, they, they can want do to what, right? yeah they can do whatever they want <laughs> yeah it's it's shit. it's a lot like, oh thank you very much it's a lot like that though the uh the helmet thing and another thing r- related to the, the ex- exactly the same thing that came up this weekend we talked last week about uh there's supposed to be well th- anyway there's supposed to be a decision and there was about the halo versus the screen the windscreen yes you're gonna go with the halo, halo. this year yeah and the halo version 2 which i don't know if we even saw it ever i don't think I've, i think we've seen it <laughs> they were supposed to bust it out at practice this weekend but they didn't and uh possibly or looking more at the windscreen for 2018 that's not out the window yet but another thing that was supposed to be decided in australia Mm. and then it got everyone came up with showed up in australia with too many objections and they said okay okay spain 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 we'll we'll go to spain i'm talking about the uh the tear off strips right now right right right. oh yeah there was supposed to be pushed back to spain and then at spain they're like okay next weekend next weekend we're gonna have to we're gonna have this solution they've been talking about maybe some sort of glove box type thing in the car where you can sort of stick pocket. them into. Yeah. The drivers didn't no, like the glove they, box because you have to take your hand off the wheel too long or put them in your pocket. Yeah. No, the, the, the teams was? also don't like them because it, it, the, the space in the cockpit is already constrained enough. Yeah. Oh, well, was a little piece of cellophane is going to cramp them too much? A no, little no, no. Piece if of they, saran if, wrap if, floating around? If they around? build like a glove box for them. Uh, do you know what the objection was to the, the, I think, agreed solution until this weekend when the, they showed up to Monaco was yeah. a pants pocket? So basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on your left or, I guess, whichever hand you are, your left or right thigh would be a pocket. You just stick it in there. The objection to that and yeah. what the FIA had to agree with was yeah. that is a fire suit. And if you're putting pieces of plastic in the pockets of your fire suit in the event of a fire, it might melt, melt or burn. And that could be very dangerous. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, pa- mm. Patty Lowe said, yeah, for this race so uh, as everyone knows they were permitted i don't know or maybe everyone doesn't know they were permitted for this race though only two tear-offs on the track i think you're allowed more in your pit stops like yeah. that's a usually they take them off in pit stops anyway and then just throw it right. over there but <laughs> i did see were, someone wiping compromised yeah maybe they just it rained anyway so you can yeah. maybe just like use water a little bit yeah but like in the practices at one point like bottas and maybe one or two other drivers went before it was sort of ironed out on, on thursday went through the pit lane to tear one off like for the purpose that yeah. he just he was just doing some practice laps in free yeah. practice and he's like oh, i need to like clear my eyes went through the pit lane and tore one off huh. went through just for that drove through didn't stop didn't stop wow yeah, yeah. huh bunch of f1 ridiculousness but anyways we're gonna see the halo next year so paint your helmet whatever color they want i think <laughs> yeah or at least go back to that yeah, absolutely. Just admit they were wrong. You can't see the heads anymore. Yeah. Everyone's going to use the T bar. One of the drivers is going to be the yellow driver, and one's going to be the black driver. <laughs> and that's it. Lewis is the black driver. Lewis is the black driver. Nico's the yellow driver. That's it. <laughs> that's not that. It's so much easier. And you can see it 360 all the way around the car from yeah. the side, from yeah. behind it. Yeah. Even if it's upside down, you can kind of see it yeah. still. <laughs> Retired. Anyway, I guess um, we're going to take a break here for a second, and then uh, we'll be back with some more. Wait, what? You guys you got one more thing? Oh, Monaco thing? You want to do this? Or do it in the oh, second yeah. half? Yeah, let's do it in the second half. 
half. Okay, there's uh, been some developments in Monaco. Maybe we talked about this last week about the uh, track. Bit. Yeah, the track maybe. Uh, I guess we got not more existing anymore. We got we got well, a bit more information that. on that. Yeah, I'll come back. With anyway, that. yeah, stick around. We'll be back in a few minutes. Another thing that came out of the Monaco Grand Prix uh, weekend, that, uh, especially at the beginning when we were talking about it, or when uh, we, we we started hearing about things, the developments of the track, you know, early Wednesday, Thursday, um, is that the Bianchi family, uh, Jules Bianchi's parents, and and their and the, their family, their whole family, is suing F one. Uh oh. Uh huh. Yep. Now, he, he, here's the thing, though. And, and, and even the, the the guys on Sky, they were like, "Yeah, we can't really comment about this, but this 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 is the luxury that we have here on this podcast. <laughs> we can comment whatever fuck we want. So we're gonna comment on it. And here's he, so here's here's the background. Jules Bianchi had a um he's, he, he had a terrible crash mm-hmm. um in a, in a Japanese Grand Prix two years ago of two years ago mm-hmm. that was it was mon- it was typhoon weather and they still decide to go ahead they decided to go ahead with the race when they did mm-hmm. due to what could be like you could say that it was pure financial or commercial, commercial considerations, considerations television commercials yeah it was it was because they couldn't they, they would have, if they were there gonna these cars out there now we, well, we need to show commercials yeah and also because well, they, they could have chosen like what if if the FIA what was strong armed enough they could have said and this is what they were considering of just pushing the race time back, mm-hmm. but Bernie wasn't gonna allow that because the 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 other the, the networks the broadcasters right where had allocated their broadcast time for F one at a certain time and they couldn't push it back because broadcast time uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly so in. in in, in that view, what the Bianchi family was wants is that because when it came when it came out to do a formal investigation and they did mm-hmm. um, the investigation that was commissioned by the FIA uh, on on this accident basically said that yes like you know um, maybe there there shouldn't have been that uh, the that heavy big, equipment there's the, that that big crane there thirty thousand have, pound truck on the track yeah, yeah maybe shouldn't have been there. Uh, they maybe shouldn't have gone out and like raced when it was so wet, but it ultimately laid the blame completely fully and squarely on Jules himself. He, they they yeah. said he should have slowed down because he didn't slow down. The same thing yeah. happened with um, was named Maria Di Viotta. Mm-hmm. It was her fault. They 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 had some better lawyers and put it a little bit more eloquently. Their quote was that they had an unexpected it's acceleration event that mm-hmm. led to Maria de Viotta's coma. Mm-hmm. She eventually came out of her coma, if, for those that don't know, she came out of her coma, but she lost one of her eyes, about a, a fifth of her brain or something in the front, and then yeah. she oh ended up dying God. like a year and a half later. <sighs> she came out of the coma, got married, wrote a book, and then died. Yeah. Jesus. But similar accidents. It was both the driver's fault for accelerating too fast. And hitting a truck. Now, this is what the Bianchi family claims is that, yes, the, the report that they commissioned may have said that right. that he that that it was his fault. Right. But what they're saying is that, no, we actually don't agree with that. The race actually shouldn't have happened under those conditions. Mm-hmm. You knew that there was a, um, a possibility of an accident, of a fatal accident, and you you failed to do enough to prevent it. I think a good counter to that is that everybody knows that every race is possibly a fatal, can possibly lead to a fatal accident. And, and this is what, and this is what, it, yeah. But, this is what I think that got F1 how, to you the can't po- calculate that to chance. the stupid problems that it is right now. I mean, I'm, I'm all for safety, and I, and I think that you know, safety yeah, is definitely a worthwhile endeavor. Ted but, should be able to wear his shorts and sandals whenever <laughs> he wants to. <laughs> exactly, and it was like, it, no, like it was just like Jules was. It was tragic that he cried that that, that 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 he crashed, and it was very tragic. Tragic what came out came out of all that, but it is a dangerous sport, mm-hmm. and the fact that it is a dangerous sport and the the people like, Joe Sayward like goes on about this in in one of his posts too. He said, "Listen, it's 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 written in the back of every ticket. It 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 should be dangerous because it is 
what they're doing is a dangerous thing. That's that's why it is a sport <laughs> even why, to that's begin why we're with. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly why. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it, why I watched. I watched the Grand Prix, and then I watched some guys fight each other last night as well. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's dangerous and exciting too. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so if you let and and and, and this is the kind of stuff that the FIA should be prepared to fight for and i and i and and i i think i honestly think that jules bianchi's family now is a bit in the wrong when it comes to this yeah um probably oh, hurt i guess but yeah oh absolutely like, and well, obviously, jesus but. yeah of course but it is and, and if if there is a judge out there or you know it's, this is obviously not going to go to like Actually, no, no, they are suing them in Britain. So if a British judge out there decides to be some sort of a bleeding heart and, 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 and decides to rule for the Jewel Bianchi family and, and, and screws this up, I think it's going to be just another one of those situations where people that don't have anything to do with the sport then change the rules and would eventually end up making the sport worse for everybody involved. Because... Mm -hmm. Saying that it was the FIA's fault or saying that it was Bernie's fault 100% and that uh, nobody should have come out or whatever, as as right as some of those statements might be, if if they fully say that, then that's going to bring all kinds of then all kinds of liability issues into consideration for any race in the future mm -hmm. that might spoil our enjoyment of, of F1. Yeah, like... The Monaco Grand Prix could they could have been like, oh my god, it's raining, it's too wet, it's yeah. Too, yeah, not gone out. Come on, come on, guys. I mean, they did take a precautionary like safety car start. Yes, yeah. I mean, these cars are actually. I mean, there's. Come on, I mean, yes, there was one death, and there should be no deaths in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, there he was the only death since since Senna, mm -hmm. since. Since the only race death. Come, come on, like look, look Maria, at what Maria died. Well, before. it's fine. Yes, uh, during the she, race, yeah. but even still, even two, still. yeah, two deaths in twenty years since Nirvana was still playing concerts. I mean, that's <laughs> big. <laughs> that's since Nirvana's death. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Like, there's, yeah. no, it's safe enough. People need to take a chill pill, and in in, in, in in many respects of life, and especially one of these leave. The fucking motorsport alone. It's mm. it's beauty uh, the way it is right now. I think we've gotten to a point. Halos aside. Yeah, halos aside and all and all that. Like halo debate. Look aside. at what's ha look at what's happening this year. It's been a great year. We don't need to make it even more cumbersome for these people to put on a great show. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree with that, a hundred percent. But the Monaco show, pff, I don't know. It might be getting in its own way. We done with Jill Bianchi, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go on. That's that's all I really want to say about that, I guess. Yeah. Can you, can you pull up uh, from the the book I highlighted at the bottom? Oh, here we go. There we go. The Monaco. We talked about this last week that there was a company, possibly or probably run by the government of. Not that below, below, below. Although that picture is pretty cool too. So that picture, the first one. Can you go to that for a second, even? Basically. What we said last week is that sorry. Hang, hang on a second. I'm, I'm going to cut you off here. One second, just with this one thing that one of our um, um, viewers just pointed out. Apparently, the the lawsuit was announced a few days after the Jules Bianchi Society was open. Mm. So, I mean, just you know, make, make of that what you will. But Jesus Christ, like. Who, who, who is like who, who are these people who is Jules, Jules Bianchi's family like come on just go to bed let it let sleeping dogs lie why you, why you gotta if mm -hmm. this was something like 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 a, like a publicity stunt to bring attention to this Jules Bianchi society that's fucking low yeah that's, yeah that's bad yeah anyway gone <laughs> sorry yeah it's not good at all but this anyway. is cool though this is super cool I'm so glad that they showed that so, yeah, leave it here for one second. Last week, we talked about these developments. They want to build uh, some sort oh, of... Oh, wait, no, that's not the picture that you want to show. No, yeah, yeah, I do for a second. Okay. This is this guy, it works. Because what they wanted to build down there is a bunch of restaurants, um, 6,000 square meters of floor space, <laughs> however much that is. A bunch of restaurants, two museums, which will be run by 
the government there and whatever and it's right down where the last two corners is that that last square corner and what sits there now on the outside of that corner is the tv compound which for f1 takes up a lot of space mm -hmm. you have all the whatever the fom stuff and this i guess is inside there i would assume this is the race control yes, no that's race control this, this is now this is on top of that new building on the that, inside of the corner that round building the, 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 which i think was temporary as well which right. is crazy yes it was but anyways, this, yes, this, it is. this is fed by the tv compound where they want to build you can go to the second picture that Whoa. so uh, where that square gray building is on the inside there that's i think like, basically where the last corner is and then this will be built. Excuse me. <coughs> so tight. Oh, bless me. That will be built there with a bunch of restaurants, like some sort of pedestrian promenade. But it looks like that's going ahead. A lot of people don't like it because it looks they too wanna, modern. They want to say that it's like there's also going to house a museum of some two sort. Museums, two, yeah, museums. two museums. Two museums. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it will include 52 luxury apartments, 250 parking spaces, and esplanade. Additional 6,000 square meter of office and retail space, which the state will own. And the company that's building it will manage the museums for 15 years. I don't know what the museum One of the museums is um, to honor the man of the sea. Oh, yeah. The man in the sea, sorry. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what else. The thing is going to take four and a half years to build, apparently. It, it looks like it will. <laughs> $330 million. It's also. It's also. The full disclaimer, it's also not going to look like this, actually, when it's built. <laughs> Buildings it never do. <laughs> it will be real. And uh, if you can put on that YouTube video, but too, don't, at the don't they want to, you were saying, don't they want to also, like, s together with this, basically, they're going to build, like, a like a higher speed stretch. Not not together with this. Totally separate. Okay. So, yeah, throw up. The, this video is all in French. So you just turn the sound off. But... Uh, Basically, on the other side, where the hill is, so where the there's the oh this this part oh shit yeah yeah so you see that uh, where basically where the the tunnel section of the circuit is where they yeah. come down the hill and go into the tunnel yeah leading off of there this project this is called the extension en mer de Monaco techniques de construction <laughs> if you want to look this up on YouTube basically they're gonna reclaim the sea they're gonna take rocks and dirt from up in the mountains behind the city and dump them all into the sea there to build the extra land to build all that to the right and the left oh my god and uh i guess this will take more than four and a half years thus but... thus rendering all helicopter shoots of the race useless <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably bernie must be up in arms <laughs> i guess there'll be some sort of height limit to that i guess but there, there's a possibility with the construction of that if it goes ahead that one is not approved yet the first one we talked about is if that land reclamation all here is approved, it leaves room for a possibly a one plus kilometer extension to the circuit, which hopefully wouldn't be designed by Tilki, I guess, but it could possibly. <laughs> don't let, don't don't let, let Tilki's sticky fingers get to this. <laughs> there you go. They, this they build this up is this our wall. plea. Flat of Fever disapproves of any Tilki tampering. <laughs> so you see how big that area is. Yeah. You see the helicopter yeah. shot? It's a huge area they want to reclaim. Anyways, but they could do some sort of uh, overtaking type scenario in that new area if this happens. But I wouldn't like that, man. I think they're... Th here's the thing. The track... What? The drive, you get the drive open? Yeah. Can you download that PDF? Yeah, anyway. The, the, I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about this because as much as I would like to see more overtaking in Monaco, uh, and I'm sure that I speak... Um, for many people out there, um, when I say this, is that you do not like yeah. mess around. They, they've, yeah. There's been way too many circuits out there that it's they've approached the, the change, the, a huge changes to the circuit with all the good intentions in the world. They wanted to, you know, make him um, more uh, more exciting. They wanted to make him faster, more overtaking, and safer. What, yeah, whatever. Yeah, safer. And whatever. What ends up happening actually in practice is that it makes it more boring. You get you get rid of a lot of the character of the circuit. Yeah, and Monaco is special and it's great because it stayed like that and it stayed. A challenge inside the driver's mind. They have yeah. to be so focused and so concentrated. If you start adding these modern sections, you know what's going to happen. They're going to add a huge, huge runoff. They're going to ruin one of the existing corners. Yeah, and probably. The, the, the tunnel entrance, I guess, would be changed or the tunnel exit would be changed. Either, oh, yeah. Either, 
And then part of, like you just said, the character, the charm, the, the whole thing on Monaco is that, in quotes, mm-hmm. in quotes, yes. the processional nature of the races. Yes. Because it's not always a procession. That's, but it's, that's the expectation is what makes it great because then you don't get a procession sometimes. and it's Like this year. And amazing. this year's Monaco Grand Prix was so, so amazing incredible. because it wasn't that. And you're going to get those races where it won't be that. And that's that's what people need to understand. Now, listen. <laughs> Here's let's go back in time for a second. Uh, <laughs> Joe Sayward um, put a, a recent article on on how, and this is something that I kind of had me wondering. Um, this came from Joe Sayward, by the way. Development in Monaco is the article. This is where I got all this info from. From not May nineteenth. Came from the same man. <clears throat> yeah, but it, Joe Sayward put it put in a good like, and, and I was kind of thinking about like how how did Monaco became like, how how did it become Monaco. How how is it that the Monaco itself as a city like came to be what it is? Came like today? a city that's a country that's in France, but it's kind of not part of France. Oh well, okay, see, that, it's not French. That, that is going that is going things. like all the way down to like medieval yeah. history. But no, I'm talking yeah. about like in recent times. How did it become like the playground for the super rich? And how oh, yeah. how how is that kind of linked Taxes. with it? Tax evasion. Yeah, yes, but how is that kind of linked? <laughs> With build the building of the race, right, and 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 having having the, this fantastic race there, and and just just to, to to make a long story short, to put to 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 put it in a quick a few bullet points. So what happened is that at the turn of the not this this past century, the Y two K, but the one before, mm-hmm. okay, a hundred years, a hundred and sixteen years ago, whatever. Like at the turn of that century. Um, we were we were in a situation where Y nineteen K, yeah, um, nineteen C nineteen yeah, <laughs> we were in a situation where the richest country in the world was Britain, Britain. right? The the British Empire was a, 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 one of its peaks, and we had you had a lot of wealthy British people with a ton of money that were moving southwards out of the rain yeah out of the rain for the winter so they did their wintering and they built they built these huge villas and huge mansions um by the mediterranean there in towns like nice and whatever like the very close to monaco yes the right the 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 french riviera like very very beautiful place in europe um and they started building their uh their villas and everything there but but monaco at that point was just this state that through like medieval manipulation had managed to stay not a, not uh, a, as a, like they, they managed to stay independent not as part of France mm. even though they spoke French or whatever but through some medieval deals and whatever but it wasn't like it wasn't the place to be seen it wasn't fashionable mm. to be a monocle back a hundred and something years ago um and the prince of Monaco at that time, in his little castle, decided that that had to change. So, <laughs> I, he basically brought in, you know, 100 years ago, he brought like the like big architects and whatever and say, listen, this is what we have to play around with. My country's only three kilometers or three miles wide by, by two or three or whatever. <laughs> um, it's actually just not sitting on a beach. It's just sitting on this rocky promenade. But what can we do? Right and <laughs> what can well, we do? Hold the race, my, yeah. <laughs> no, my, well, my lord. Yeah, well, at first they they started to, um, it it started with a with a hotel complex, but and then they they threw the casino, they threw the casino because they were like, you know what these what are, what are these wealthy British types like? They like sport and they like to gamble, <laughs> so <laughs> so they built them the casino. Mm-hmm. Which today, interestingly, if you are a resident of Monaco, you cannot gamble in the Monaco casino. Really? You have to be from outside of Monaco. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, wow. is a, this is a thing. Yeah. That I did not know. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So anyway, but huh. so they built the, the casino and they, 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 they made sure, you know, the, he, he brought like big architects. They, they made sure to make the casino like as grand as possible. Yeah. And they built some hotels. And from that, people were like, oh, and then, and, then they, and then came the shops and then came this. And with the added like little bit of wealth here and there coming in, people started bringing their cars. And then as a lure for, for, for the rich people to start moving into Monaco and to start developing there, that's when they introduced the tax-free thing. So any income and uh, personal tax, you, you don't have to pay uh, 
you don't have to pay any of that in Monaco. And as they introduced that, the rich people loved that. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they they started to like buy property in Monaco. Oh, and, just pretend I live over there. Yeah, yeah. And then they brought their cars. And once they brought their cars, they started to uh, they they wanted to form an automobile club. Right. Now, <laughs> the automobile club that was in Monaco those days was actually part of the French grand like the, the, it was kind of uh, allied with with the french the national FIA. auto yeah mm-hmm. or no, 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 before, not the fia before, be, the before FIA. the fia but it was kind of like it was considered like the french it, they were basically like a subdivision of the french but they wanted to have their own mm-hmm. and it was this guy who was uh anthony nogue's parent and anthony nogue is the person who's the, the last corner of monaco is named after him mm-hmm. nogue's oh. corner i was gonna say the name sounds yeah. familiar yeah <laughs> so anthony nogue's father uh, as a head of uh, of the uh, what was then the automobile automobile club de monaco um went basically up up to like the main uh, certifying body of like these automobile clubs the the then equivalent of the fia and said listen why can't we just get a nation status of our automobile club and they were basically like no you don't have too many you don't have enough people you don't have enough this you don't have enough that and you don't have a race <laughs> so it, ba- it was basically oh <laughs> so then yeah so then they went back home his son actually was the one that executed the plan for it that anthony knows the last yeah. corner and he was in and this was we mustn't forget that this was in an era where tracks were big open country roads like spa where mm. tracks were huge like like like, like uh, monza they, they were them, they were they were big <laughs> things and they would they Grand were basically Tash. there was almost as Mayberg much Green. pushback people were like you can't race through the streets of of do you not have enough room what are we gonna do <laughs> like there's too many corners what's gonna happen there when you see those old ones it's <laughs> yeah. it's actually insanity they're going past like sidewalk curbs and those uh those things were not welded down their drain covers oh yeah back no. then. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. So the, the basically the race came to be as a as one of the reasons, uh, one one of the the reasons why the automobile club, the Monaco, like was then offered a nation status, mm-hmm. and so they organized the race, and almost as a fluke, it ended up being a fantastic race, and it has pretty much stayed so since then. It is one of those races that you go you said there. The longest consecutive running. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and, and of modern F one, that's still yeah. in modern F one. So, and and that's why they get the special treatment. That's why they get the special privilege. And I think that whereas some tracks do lend themselves for future development, I think that Monaco should be kept how it is, basically untouched. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't completely object to an extra kilometer. Why not? It's been like this for 70 years, 60, 70, 80 years, even more. It'll still be Monaco. Yeah, it'll, it, you know it'll, what I mean? As long as the rest is still the same, that's cool. Like, I want them to extend the Österreich ring, the A1 ring, the, the Red yeah, Bull ring. That's... To bring it back to how it was. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so it's a bit different. Let's look at, you get that PDF? Yep. You get that PDF? Let's look at that, talking about uh, the uh, same subject. One? Yeah, this one. So this, we, uh, I don't know, this has come up and there's been a lot of talk about Monza not being in F1 anymore. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, this is the changes now. So scroll, scroll through this a bit. Near the bottom, you can see, um, you can see like a good overview. So these are scheduled changes to the track. Go, no, go, this, go up, go up. What's This is uh, just an example of. One of the like, chicanes. That's what they want to do with that chicane, that, to make it faster, right? No. The first chicane is going to be eliminated, so there's oh. gonna, the first straight is going to be all the way down, and I believe this is representing the Hueva Grande, which is also going to be eliminated. It's going to be put into changed into a slower right hander, and then a chicane like that, leading okay. into the rest of the track. So scroll down, you can see like a full a full set of changes. Yeah. So this is what it was before. Uh, you can see see where like the number one is. That chicane is there now. It's like a bus stop, basically. Bus stop chicane. Oh, okay. That comes off the straight. So now the, the straight is going to... You're going to come straight out of the parabolica and Ooh. all the way down the straight. And that Corva Grande is gone. And they're gonna, so you see it's got replaced with where the C is, a tighter corner. 
Curva so, Grande in, says in it, Italian means uh, big, the big, big curve. The big curve. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But it's not going to be the big curve anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I guess that maybe that runoff isn't going to be there because there's trees. I think, um, but where it says C, C is like the, the new line um, in, inside of turn one and two, where the guardrail is. Mm-hmm. When I scroll down further, you can see a full overview of everything. These are all just like the engineer drawings. You see the elevation changes, the width. This is amazing. Where'd you find this shit? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe this this came from uh, the company that did all the design work, all of this engineering stuff. We're looking through pages and pages of a PDF. You can find it. Um, well, I guess we're gonna post from, a link to it. Drone. Yeah, I'll post it. I'll post a link to it. Yeah. For all our audio listeners. Yeah. Hey, how are you going? How are you doing, audio listeners? <laughs> we see that you guys are listening more and more. Thanks, by the way. And the, these are all very slight changes to the existing corners. I guess they're just going to move or slightly change where some of the barriers are. Like, no actual track changes. But the bottom there, what, you can so see what's, now. But what's, what's, the, what's the intended effect? Are they going for a faster Monza? It's it's faster. the The main straight's going to be faster because that I bl- I think this started because they want to host um, Moto GP and Moto GP can't go through that first chicane. But the if you look where that chicane is, they just put up some barriers and you it can be eliminated now. It's paved straight now. Right, mm-hmm. the, the paving's already done. But going straight through there, you hit the grand curve, the big curve, way too fast. So that has to be changed. So it's being changed into a corner you're going to have to break for, the first one. Yeah. And then break one or two more gears down into that chicane. And then the rest of the circuit, you're, you're, you're moving. And I guess uh, the second chicane there is will be... This one? Yeah, you'll be hitting that slower now. But maybe you'll be able to take it faster because you're not breaking as hard into it. Mm. The speed change will be different. Because you're not coming... like Normally, you get that first curve is taking like 200 or more. Mm. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting. This ha- this is happening. And they said, uh, I guess the original will be preserved. It can be used still. But mm. this is the new layout that's going to be used for bikes and cars. Uh, and I guess cool. all classes. So, they'll be looking cool, to cool, get cool. this uh, grade F1. one approved. Yeah. And uh, this is probably what we're going to see next year for 2017 with F1. Oh, that's if, cool. If the, the contract still isn't uh, approved, right? Approved. It's not signed for, uh-huh. for Monza. This is for next year. This is probably what they want, though. This, if if, no, yeah, Bernie, we, have, we haven't we haven't got Bernie an annu- we this. haven't gotten got an announcement yet. But this the thing, this is gonna be like what's gonna secure. This, this is this is, this is basically race, why though. why they were dangling a uh, freaking um, uh, San Marino. What's what's a uh, freaking yeah the uh, 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 Jesus. I'm blanking out. Why am I blanking out? The uh, Imola. Imola, yeah. yeah. That's why they were dangling Imola, like the whole Imola thing came to play. Like, so Obviously, they were just waiting for like for them to like be serious and sit down and like propose a number of changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, oh, Imola needs so much uh, upgrading, and who's gonna pay for that? Mm-hmm. They're doing this, but I don't know. I don't think this is what's holding up F1 staying here. Is it just that Bernie wants more money? More money, yes. And they want to they want to bring MotoGP so they can earn more money, but that costs them money because they have to build this. <laughs> So, sort of you gotta a, spend money to make money. <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> that's all I got for this week. Yeah, okay, so you, you know what else happened? Uh, okay, you know what else happened this past week? I know that you 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 went and watched your fight after the Monaco Grand Prix, but you know what else was going on last night? Well, yesterday, yes. Yeah. What? Indy five hundred. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now we, okay we well just yeah we were oh, just talking about that yeah interesting result yeah i yeah. forgot about that right, yeah, right, yeah. right. R- rossi whatever he won the indy 500 alexander rossi from f1 driver one yeah as so a rookie that's and, and and he one of the comments of from his team was that he apparently doesn't didn't had no idea about ovals and he went and won <laughs> yeah. and he was drinking milk ago. on the podium so yeah that just goes to show you i guess like the, the skill level <laughs> you need in f1 <laughs> versus indy 5 but real harry anto shows oh, you the money level fans you need. just tuned out <laughs> yeah we see real harry anto he was fighting for that same seat as rossi yeah i know that shows you that money does beat skill a lot of the time <laughs> harry anto couldn't even harry anto sucked so bad yesterday that oh, he got man. in trouble for sucking at letting people pass him. 
he got he got reprimanded for not following the blue flags and he was having trouble letting cars get by him and he finished four laps down which probably should have been five or six laps down if he was letting cars go by as they should and his teammate in the same car finished got two penalties more than anybody and beat him by two laps come on man yeah, I think Rossi will probably might be back next year, especially after that. Yeah, who, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Maybe yeah. they can't, they can't afford it. Maybe because he doesn't bring money, but maybe he brings yeah. money now. Maybe he, yeah, he maybe just won that. He just probably the, got a bunch increasing, of increasing uh, North American audience. Yeah, he just got a big. That was the 100th running of the Indy 500. Yeah. They added oh my God. an extra like 50,000 seats to the stadium. They had something like 15 law enforcement agencies doing security at the racetrack. Some some crazy shit like that. Jesus. Yeah. But so, anyways, a lot of attention for Rossi. Hopefully, he threw an F1 reference in there. Well, I mean, it's, if, if anything, uh, up on uh, the podium. These F1 and Indy fans, like, if they if they look him up and they say like, who won the the hundredth running of the Indy 500, they're gonna see it was Alexander Rossi. Oh, where the hell did he, come, he come from? from? Yeah, Manor F one and what, the worst team. Welcome, welcome back, uh, <laughs> North American fans that are watching on or listening. There is another thing that also happened this past weekend. What's that? The first episode of Top Gear, oh. the, the, the 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 BBC the BBC Top Gear, and I know this is not oh, by the any, BBC one. The BBC I, one. It's not as exciting. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I but, GP. No, 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 no. Uh, but uh, GT. GT. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the, GP. The first episode of the of the BBC new incarnation of Top Gear with Chris Evans and How the freaking what's his name, Matt LeBlanc and Sabine Schmidt. And, Anybody get punched? Yeah. <clears throat> no. But I don't know if you remember, but <laughs> in this very show a few months ago, when we were talking about. Top Gear. I said that I would w- I would sit and I would watch the entire first episode and I'd come it's and tell us how sacrifice. it was. <laughs> yeah. What a sacrifice, man! So so I did, and I can tell you how how, how it was. <laughs> okay. And and this this is also probably <laughs> this is what I predicted back then. I said if it sucks, I'm just you know I'm gonna, I'm still gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna watch one episode and I'm not gonna watch it That's again. That's how pilots work. You gotta watch the whole thing. Yeah, you right. Yeah. Show. You can't even judge a show by a pilot uh, usually. Well, t- true, correct. But it's a different type of pilot. I said that I'd watch it, and if it was subpar, I'd never watch it again. And the news: I'm not gonna watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> that bad? It was it was pretty bad, man. It was uh, uh, LeBlanc. He did a. He he did. They they basically tried to like do like the old show. So they have uh, mm-hmm. they had an audience bid. Then they had a, um, a they had a review of a couple cars. Then they had a challenge, some sort of a, a cool little challenge in between. And it's clear that it's gonna be like the main two stars are gonna be uh, Chris Evans and Matt LeBlanc. Like they're gonna be like the char- yeah the characters. And it was man, it was in one of their oh, features. I'm just saying like he. He, so what they were supposed to do was basically drive these Reliant Robins. I don't know if you if you know which the Reliant the Reliant Robins are these British cars that only have three Maybe wheels, yeah. but instead of like doing like many three wheelers for stability, they put um, two wheels at the front and then one wheel at the back. No, this one did one wheel at the front with the steering, and what that causes is that this car is very unstable. Over. If yeah, you can flip <laughs> over very easily. With you know it. what? I went. I've been to England when I was. 13 or 14 i think yeah. and then he's my mom's uncle where we st- we stayed for like half our trip there we would travel we went a couple of countries and stuff but when we were in england my mom's uncle there has one of those <laughs> in yellow like a <laughs> fucking banana i don't know if he still does now that was 15 years ago 16 but it, he we drove around in it and it was kind of scary man like, yeah i bet yeah <laughs> we have to, you have to balance like so me and my brother my brother's two years younger so we're, we're both small kids yeah and so like i guess my mom's in the front with him and then you have to put the adult in the center in the back the two kids on the side <laughs> yeah you have to balance it up wow that's yeah cool. no, yeah pull no, one up it's, pull it's, up it's a picture of it, it reliant it, see if you Robin. can find one in yellow just for yellow the st- my reliant personal Robin. nostalgia uh, but yeah so they had a race in one of those without it, it, rolling it, it, it. Yeah, it was the challenge was to get from uh, uh, from London to Blackpool. I don't know where that is in Britain, but it's, it's I guess it's pretty far. Um, Blackpool. And the uh, Malabang's car didn't really didn't quite make his spoilers, by the way. Uh, alert. Mm-hmm. And but the whole interaction within that there was that challenge, and then there was another thing that they did. Uh, 
<laughs> the other one flipped. <laughs> What's the other this one? This guy's really shit. Anyway, in, in any time that there was supposed to be considered, clearly they were going for this. The, 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 there was supposed to be like a the kind of um, relationship in between Chris Evans and Mother Blanc that Clarkson and James May or Clarkson and Hammond had. And it's, Except they developed it over like 15 years. Ex- that's the thing. It, <laughs> it didn't happen at all. It was like, it, it seemed forced. Some uh, s- some critics had, have described this show as like the old show, but without the laughs. <laughs> and it's uh-huh. it, it basically uh-huh. feels like that. Everything is, and it's so awkward to watch. Like, and Mad LeBlanc is clearly trying to be like, he's like, he's he, he busts up like a, a few things where he's like, ha 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 ha, you know, like we say in America, or like, you know, this is what we do in America, or whatever. Like, it's kind I don't of, think he's like, actually a funny person. Like, he was on a comedy TV show and all that, and he was Joey and the funny, like, guy in the show, but I don't think he's funny in real life. Like, he's, he's shown up at a few F1 races too. Yeah. And he always seems like he's almost nervous to be on TV when they ask him like <laughs> oh but on the grid walk or whatever yeah. and he's like oh yeah, just uh, like racing and stuff <laughs> I mean like he's I don't know I was, was kind of Joey Matt LeBlanc he was yeah how you know. doing the yeah uh, <laughs> I'll stop saying that the basically Top Gear new Top Gear new BBC Top Gear uh, I wouldn't recommend it uh, for you guys there, were, there was maybe like one feature there with the you know the same people that did the Aerial Atom then they basically like built this desert buggy. It's, it's kind of. Oh, I think I've seen that thing online. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it looked it, lo- it looked like a pretty fun car to drive, but exactly like he, freaking uh, Joey Mad LeBlanc was the one that reviewed. He he did that review on his own, and <laughs> it it seemed like he was just trying to be Clarkson too much. Like he was trying to like review it as if Clarkson was reviewing it. Mm. Like he was even like. Like the same style humor. Yeah, the same style of uh, or trying. And oh man, some of the jokes that Chris Evans, on the other hand, tried to do when uh, um, when people doing like the you know the star and the reasonably priced car when they do the laps around. I don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah, it's it's it it was just some of the jokes was were like either too forced or they just didn't hit. One other like just just one more thing about about the Top Gear like I want I want to drop it and I want to just say just you know I don't I don't recommend getting into it but one thing that I did find kind of bold of them or whatever is that they are uh, you know for their starting a recent big price car, uh, car how they used to do a lap around their circuit their uh, dust the airport, airport. yeah <laughs> it, for that segment they turned the circuit and they they changed the car instead of being just a reasonably pr- priced car is um world rally cross spec mini and they do a like a, a rally cross lap where half of it is tarmac and half of it is dirt so that's the format of the star in the car show yes oh, okay that's what i was just gonna ask you did yeah. they carry over the old times or anything no like i said to change every yeah they yeah, need an excuse they need a reason oh, for sure wasn't Matt LeBlanc was the fastest guy on the old show. Didn't no, he, didn't no, he have no. the, the record? No, but he, he he had a he had a he had a high lap for oh, sure. But I thought he, I thought he was the no, top no, one. No, he was. <laughs> <laughs> but Dave Evans, the host, also had a time on that oh, on okay. the old charts too. Anyway, but yeah, watch so, Jay Leno's Garage instead if you yeah. like car reviews. He's got better cars, I think, show up on there anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, a La, a La Ferrari made an appearance or whatever oh. they, they talked about La Ferrari. Anyway, um, I'm still gonna check it out. The, the the fact is that they did do uh, like the, the challenge was rally cross, and it like it it wasn't fun and the comment Chris Evans commentary wasn't fun about it and the track didn't look as challenging as maybe it it should have been, <laughs> um, but there is that thing. Remember, I've been telling you, man, rally cross it's it's gaining popularity out there. Yeah, I watched it's a couple getting, with you. It's, it's fun. It's 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 growing out there. Um, but other than that, there's there's actually not a lot to redeem the show. Jesus, uh, sorry, sorry, new Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're a new Top Gear fan, uh, I disagree. Hopefully they'll iron out the uh, the sorry. parts that I'm sure they're gonna get a lot of social media of re, uh, reviews today. Oh, 100 percent. But I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully it'll get better. I'll check it out anyways. <laughs> Make my own opinion, but. On a closing note, I just wanna I just wanna say uh, one thing. Uh, I don't know if anybody has noticed, but it's two weeks till the Canadian Grand Prix. Yes, can't wait. So yeah. excited! It's I'm another mini vacation. Excited. Mini yeah. vacation. Now, now that that's the next Grand Prix, like I'm yeah. I'm super yeah. pumped. Yeah. 
What's uh, what's what, what what are we gonna do ne- next uh, next week for the podcast? Because we're leaving for Montreal on Wednesday, mm-hmm. uh, to be there for the open track day. So are we gonna t- like? I guess we're gonna put a put up put out like a, a a quick like a short show before we go. Yeah. 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 yeah we can do that. Yeah. We can uh, whatever. We'll just blog the whole weekend. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, I know what we're gonna do. In Montreal is gonna be. We have some things prepared for you guys, mm-hmm. but before before the, the the as a as a I guess a pre-show to the Montreal Grand Prix, we will still have that, mm-hmm. right? Like the like the regular podcast, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. a short one even. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess we'll we'll, we'll see everybody there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see right. everyone for the uh, the well, no, yeah, well, yeah, we'll be we're leaving Wednesday. So Wednesday, we'll, yes. Tuesday, we'll be back full show. Yes, yeah. the next the Mon- next day. Monday, Tuesday, next week. No, no, Tuesday. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to reiterate, if you've been showing up to or wanting to show to show up to our F1 at Betty's events and have been saving it for the Canadian Grand Prix, that it's that we're going to show, not we, but that we're, it's gonna be shown live. You're not gonna get to meet us. Well, yeah, we're not gonna be there, but <laughs> it's still gonna be happening. Lots of people are probably gonna go. Uh, the bar. Uh, is going to be showing it, so don't worry. Upstairs at Betty's, we will be there. F- well, we won't be there, but Nachos we'll be Nachos and wings are still half price, yeah. but they will be. And the wings are great. And if you're going to the Canadian Grand Prix, we'll see you there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. See you guys later. Cheers. Thank you.